And now it's time for On Point, where we connect to experts to delve deeper into some of the key issues facing Korea in the spotlight right now. Now, one of the key figures in the incoming Yoon administration have stressed that the new government's top priority is, of course, improving the livelihoods of South Koreans. Now, who are still, of course, unfortunately grappling with the impact of the pandemic and worsening levels of debt and income polarization. Now, the key is to pursue sustainable development across the nation by promoting equal opportunities and enhancing their capabilities to build a flourishing society. But it's always easier said than done, of course, and the government is really going to have to hit the ground running to address the wide array of issues related to people's livelihoods, from regional industries and innovation, redistribution of welfare and housing. For an in-depth look at this and for a preview of some policies that we could see from the incoming unit administration, we speak to a senior advisor to the Presidential Transmission, sorry, Transition Committee on Balanced Regional Development, Professor Oh Moon Song, who also teaches tax accounting at Hanyang Women's University. A very good morning to you, Professor. Thought we were going to connect with you on the video there, but you caught us on the phone. Well, first off, Professor O, what have been the key priorities for the Transition Committee with regard to balanced regional development? Moving on, people, is the focus of the SPA, uh, Committee on the Balanced Regional Development of the Presidential Transition Committee. Assigned that an area is well-developed can be seen by looking at how well the population is spread out on average. The metropolitan area accounts for 12% of the total land area, but the number of residents is over 50%. Distributing these populations on average across the country cannot be forced. This is possible only by expanding job market, advanced educational facilities, and added infrastructure in each region. The most important thing for the Special Committee on Balanced Regional Development is to create an environment to achieve a special justice that disperses the national population on average. So, Professor, I guess the big question now is you, being, you of course, being part of the Transition Committee, uh, how are you aiming to achieve this balanced regional development? The Special Committee for Balanced Regional Development provides the tax incentives to disperse the individual and cooperation with the spending power to non-metropolitan areas in order to disperse the population and provide the local educational institutions with the same high quality educational environment as those of the metropolitan area so that students can come to local universities. We are trying to focus on creating a regional environment, but people want to live in by creating an environment for people to live in and by equipping other infrastructure to reduce the gap in real estate price. And Professor, you mentioned taxes there, and of course there are crucial means of supporting inclusive growth across the nation, especially in the form of redistribution. Now, what are some major reforms that we can expect this year under the new Yoon government? The Special Committee on Balanced Regional Development intends to introduce a system called Opportunity and Development Zone Project, ODZ, across the country. For the purpose of balanced regional development, the ODZ is a system that is uh, significantly different from the existing special joint system. If the existing special joint system was a top-down system run by the central government, the newly introduced ODZ system is a bottom-up system run by the local government. If the existing special joint system was a equally distributed system by the central government, in ODZ, the government only presents data and the requirements to belong to ODZ, and the local government use this data to apply for the desired industry in the area they want. And the central government provides common tax support and provides tax support to that industry. If the local government asks for the necessary regulations to be loosened, a comprehensive environment will be created in the ODZ region. They will loosen the regulations and provide support for educational institutions that can obtain the necessary manpower. Regarding the tax issue, for example, if a multi-dose owner, uh, house owner or in the metropolitan area sells a house and includes the one billion one in capital gain tax, 
if a multi house owner goes to the ODZ and buys a house in the ODZ area, a large portion of the capital gains tax will be deferred and after a certain period of time, it makes either situation where it is reduced or exempted. In this way, although the tax law reform is desirable, if it is not implemented on the whole country due to the national sentiment, try it first in the ODZ region, and if it works well, if, if, if it works well, the ODZ is going to be used as a test bed for that purpose. Now, Professor, uh, there's been so much interest in the, uh, the real estate aspect as well. So naturally, there's going to be a huge interest in how the next administration is going to be dealing with uh, land and property taxes, of course, including myself as well. Uh, what's been the biggest problem over the past uh, five years under the Moon administration? Uh, but at the same time, what's the direction for UNS uh, taxes for land and property owners? The UNS administration will use the market hostile real estate tax policy implemented under the Moon's administration. Because we know that it is very difficult to stabilize real estate price through real estate taxes. We will not impose an excessive amount of comprehensive and real estate tax in order to lower the real estate prices through the comprehensive real estate tax. We will take a policy of opening a way out so that the real estate for sale, the sale can come out to the market at a certain time for multi house owning. And, uh, Professor, there were actually some complaints about the Moon government's corporate tax policies, particularly among foreign businesses here in the country. And are there going to be any changes made to make business in Korea more attractive? Unlike other countries, Korea's corporate income tax rate system has a four-tier tax rate structure, and the top corporate income tax rate is higher than other, uh, higher than other average OECD countries. About 90% of OECD countries have a one-tier tax rate structure. This reason, the reason for having such a structure is that corporation cannot be viewed as rich corporation or a poor corporation, unlike individuals. As for Korea's corporate income tax rate structure, like most other OECD countries, it is reasonable for reform to a one-level tax rate structure, and the top tax rate should be lowered. Uh, certainly a lot of uh, policies at hand for the incoming administration, but unfortunately this is all the time that we have. Professor, thank you very much for your insights. Uh, we're really looking forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank you very much.